Over recent decades, our knowledge of the physiological significance of dietary fibre has expanded, leading to the introduction of a new definition of dietary fibre by Codex Alimentarius in 2010. In this definition, the fibre components captured by the Prosky method, AOAC method 985.29, are included, as well as resistant starch and non-digestible oligosaccharides. However, the decision on inclusion of non-digestible oligosaccharides in the fibre value was left to the discretion of national authorities. In response to this change in definition of dietary fibre, Megazyme directed its research towards developing an all-encompassing method that would accurately measure resistant starch along with the other fibre components and allow separate measurement of non-digestible oligosaccharides. The outcome of this research was the Integrated Total Dietary Fibre Method, published in 2007 and accepted as AOAC Method 2009.01 and 2011.25, following extensive interlaboratory evaluation. Evaluation of these new methods over the period of 2009 to 2015 identified various limitations of the integrated total dietary fibre method, so the research team at Megzyme set about finding solutions. Criticisms of the method were a. The 16-hour digestion step with pancreatic alpha amylase plus amyloglucosidase has no physiological base. A more likely time of residence in the human small intestine is approximately four hours. B. Resistant maltodextrins are produced from non-resistant starch under the incubation conditions used and are measured incorrectly as dietary fibre. C. Fructo-oligosaccharides are underestimated using the water's sugar pack HPLC column. Fructotriose chromatographs as a disaccharide and thus is not included in the dietary fiber value. These limitations were addressed by A. Reducing the incubation time with pancreatic alpha amylase and amyloglucosidase to four hours in line with the likely time of residence of food in the small intestine. B. Increasing the concentrations of pancreatic alpha amylase and amyloglucosidase so that the dietary fiber values obtained for various resistant starch controls were in line with ileostomy values. These increased concentrations resulted in hydrolysis of the troublesome resistant maltodextrins produced using the integrated dietary fiber method. C. Using TSK gel permeation HPLC columns in place of water's sugar pack to get accurate delineation of disaccharides and trisaccharides, and thus including fructotriose in the dietary fiber value. Together with these changes, other improvements to the method were introduced, namely d. The preparation of samples for HPLC was dramatically simplified and e. The removal of sodium azide from the incubation buffer was possible with the use of the shorter incubation time, allowing less chance of microbial contamination. The outcome of this work is a vastly improved method for the measurement of total dietary fibre, namely the Rapid Integrated Total Dietary Fibre Method. This method has been subjected to a successful interlaboratory evaluation under the auspices of AOAC International and ICC to become AOAC Method 2017.16 and ICC Method 185. The method described in the Megzyme Rapid Integrated Total Dietary Fibre Booklet and as detailed in this video allows accurate measurement of total dietary fibre, including resistant starch and non-digestible oligosaccharides in a variety of foods and food ingredients, both solid and liquid. This method is applicable to a variety of industries, including cereals, food and beverage and animal feeds. The kit contains sufficient reagents for 100 assays, The principle of the Rapid Integrated Total Dietary Fibre Assay Kit is shown in these slides. Duplicate test portions are incubated with stirring or shaking in the presence of pancreatic alpha amylase and amyloglucosidase 
for four hours at 37 degrees Celsius in sealed 250 milliliter bottles. During this step, non-resistant starch is solubilized and hydrolyzed to D-glucose and traces of maltose. The reaction is terminated by adjustment of the pH to 8.2, at which pH amyloglucosidase has no action, and then heating to approximately 95 degrees Celsius to inactivate both the amyloglucosidase and pancreatic alpha amylase. Protein in the sample is denatured by heating and digested with protease. The pH is adjusted to approximately 4.2 by addition of 4 milliliters of 2 molar acetic acid. This ensures that the conditions of precipitation on addition of ethanol are the same as for other dietary fiber methods. Upon pH adjustment, four volumes of 95% ethanol are added to the incubation mixture and stirred. SDFP is precipitated from the incubation mixture and the suspension is filtered. The IDF and SDFP recovered on the crucible is washed, dried and weighed. This residue weight is corrected for protein, ash and the reagent blank value in the determination of IDF plus SDFP. A portion of the aqueous ethanolic filtrate is concentrated, deionized and analyzed by HPLC to obtain a value for SDFS. Separate values for IDF and SDFP can be obtained by altering the procedure slightly. Prior to sample analysis, prepare the required additional reagents as described in the data booklet. Subsequently, the kit components should be prepared, and once prepared, they are ready for use in the assay procedure. Use the contents of bottles 2, 4 and 5 as supplied. Bottle 1 contains a mixture of pancreatic alpha amylase and amyloglucosidase. This can be prepared for immediate use or alternatively can be prepared as a more stable ammonium sulfate suspension. For immediate use, add 1 gram of the contents of bottle 1, pancreatic alpha amylase and amyloglucosidase powder to 50 milliliters of sodium malleate buffer and stir on a magnetic stirrer for 5 minutes to dissolve. Store the solution on ice and use within 4 hours. Alternatively, this enzyme preparation can also be prepared as a stabilized suspension in ammonium sulfate solution. To achieve this, add 5 grams of the contents of bottle 1 to 70 milliliters of sodium malleate buffer in a 200 milliliter beaker and dissolve by mixing on a magnetic stirrer for approximately 5 minutes. When the enzyme mixture is completely dissolved, add 35 grams of solid ammonium sulfate and dissolve by stirring. Transfer the suspension to a 100 milliliter measuring cylinder and adjust to volume with ammonium sulfate solution. In this form, the enzymes are stable at 4 degrees Celsius for approximately 3 months. Bottle 3 contains the retention time standard, which is used to check that TSK HPLC chromatography is performing as expected. To prepare this standard solution, dissolve 2.5 grams of the contents of bottle 3 in 80 milliliters of a solution of 0.02% sodium azide. Add 10 milliliters of the contents of bottle 4, the glycerol internal standard, and adjust the volume to 100 milliliters with 0.02% sodium azide solution and mix thoroughly. Store the solution in appropriately sized aliquots in a freezer below minus 10 degrees Celsius. Accurately weigh 1 gram of sample to the third decimal place into 250 milliliter Fisher brand glass bottles. Record the weight.
to each bottle add a 7 by 30 millimeter stirrer bar. Wet each sample with 1 milliliter of 95% volume for volume ethanol. Then add 35 milliliters of 50 millimolar sodium malleate buffer, pH 6, plus 2 millimolar calcium chloride to each sample and place the bottles in a water bath at 37 degrees Celsius over a submersible magnetic stirrer, stirring at 170 RPM. After 5 minutes, add 5 milliliters of pancreatic alpha amylase plus amyloglucoside solution to each bottle and start the timer. Cap the bottles and allow the reaction to proceed with the stirring at 170 RPM for exactly 4 hours. Alternatively, incubate the bottles in a shaking water bath at 150 RPM in orbital motion for 4 hours. While the samples are incubating, prepare the reagent blanks by adding 5 ml of pancreatic alpha amylase and amyloglucoside solution to 35 ml of malleate buffer to Fisher brand bottles in duplicate. After 4 hours, remove the bottles from the stirring water bath and adjust the pH to 8.2 with 3 ml of 0.75 molar tris solution to inactivate the myeloglucosidase. Place the bottles in a boiling water bath and heat the contents to greater than 90 degrees Celsius. Incubate for 20 minutes with occasional shaking by hand. Using a thermometer, ensure the final temperature of the bottle contents is greater than 90 degrees Celsius. Then cool the bottles to 60 degrees Celsius in a water bath for 10 minutes. Add 0.1 ml of protease suspension, bottle 2, and incubate at 60 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes to hydrolyze protein. Cool the bottles to room temperature and adjust the pH to approximately 4.5 by adding 4 ml of 2 molar acetic acid to each bottle. Then add 1 ml of glycerol internal standard at 100 mg per ml, bottle 4, to each bottle and mix thoroughly. Precipitate high molecular weight soluble dietary fibre with 4 volumes of 95% ethanol preheated to 60 degrees Celsius. Allow this suspension to sit at room temperature for at least 1 hour before filtration. However, if required from a time standpoint, it can be left to sit overnight. Prepare the crucibles with sea light as described in a separate video entitled Preparation of Crucibles for Filtration. Tear crucible containing sea light to the nearest 0.1 mg. 
wet and redistribute the sea light in the crucible with approximately 15 millilitres of 78% volume per volume ethanol. Apply suction to draw the sea light into a bed on the crucible. Transfer the crucible from the waste butener to the sample butener and apply a vacuum to the flask. Decant some of the supernatant solution from the sample into a beaker. Then apply the rest of the sample to the crucible. Use the decanted solution to rinse any remaining sample from the sample bottle. And use the rubber policeman spatula to dislodge sample from the sides of the incubation bottle. Apply this solution to the crucible. Use a wash bottle with 78% ethanol and a spatula to displace any further sample residue. And apply this suspension to the crucible. Retain the filtrate for SDFS determination. Transfer the crucible back to the waste collection Butner flask. Wash the residue with two 15 millilitre portions of each of the following. 78% ethanol, 95% ethanol. And finally wash with acetone. Continue the suction for a few minutes until acetone cannot be smelt in the crucible. To determine the high molecular weight dietary fibre content, loosely cover the crucibles with aluminium foil and dry these at 105 degrees Celsius overnight in a hot air oven. Transfer the crucibles from the oven to a desiccator and allow it to cool over one hour. Weigh the crucibles correct to the nearest 0.1 milligram and record this weight. Calculate the residue mass by subtracting tear weight. Determine protein and ash weights in milligrams. Protein analysis is performed using Keldal or combustion methods. Ash analysis is determined by incinerating the second residue for five hours at 525 degrees Celsius. Determine high molecular weight dietary fibre by subtracting protein and ash weights. Transfer the retained ethanolic filtrate to a 500ml graduated cylinder. Adjust the volume to approximately 300 millilitres using 78% volume per volume ethanol. Transfer this solution to a 1 litre beaker and mix by swirling. Then transfer approximately 75 millilitres of this solution to a 100 millilitre graduated cylinder. The exact volume is not important because calculations are based on the ratio of the SDFS peak areas to the peak area of the glycerol internal standard. Transfer the 75 millilitres of the SDFS fraction to a 250 millilitre evaporator flask. Attach the flask to a rotary evaporator and concentrate the dryness at 60 degrees Celsius.
Remove the flask from the evaporator and add 8 millilitres of distilled water. Swirl the flask for approximately 5 minutes to dissolve the sugars. and transfer the solution to a 30 ml polypropylene tube. Add approximately 1.5 grams of Amberlite FPA 53 hydroxide resin to a 13 ml polypropylene tube. Then add approximately 1.5 grams of Ambrosep 200 H plus resin. Tap the tube. Transfer 5 milliliters of SDFS fraction to the appropriately labeled tube containing the resins. Tap the tube and mix the solution and resin thoroughly by inversion a few times over 5 minutes. During this process, 90-95% to of the salt in the sample is removed by the resins. Using a plastic syringe, remove an aliquot of the deionized sample solution. Filter this solution through a 0.45 micrometer polyvanilidine fluoride filter into a microfuge tube. Transfer samples to auto sampler vials. Cap the vials. Then place the tray of samples into the auto sampler. Analyze the samples by HPLC through two TOSO TSK gel G2500 PWXL columns connected in series with the TSK gel PWX1 guard column. Remove remaining traces of salt using a Biorad Laboratories inline deionization column containing cation and anion exchange resin. A typical HPLC pattern from TSK columns is shown in this figure, where we see the glycerol peak, glucose, sucrose, and the SDFS fraction. The sample analyzed here was kidney beans. Calculation of total dietary fibre as high molecular weight dietary fibre, IDF plus SDFP, and SDFS can be performed as detailed in the data booklet, or calculations can be significantly simplified using the Excel MegaCalc application specific to this rapid integrated total dietary fibre assay kit, which is available to download free of charge from the Megazyme website. The MegaCalc spreadsheet provides full instructions for use. Open the MegaCalc worksheet and input the following. Sample details. Insert values for the blank residue weights and protein and ash weights in milligrams. Insert the sample identifier. For the measurement of IDF plus SDFP, insert the sample weights of test portion mass 1, M1, and test portion mass 2, M2, in grams. Insert the residue weight 1, R1, from test portion mass 1 in milligrams. 
residue mass is calculated by subtracting the crucible plus sea light tear weight from the dried and cooled crucible containing dietary fibre residue plus sea light. And also insert the residue weight for test portion mass 2, M2. Insert the protein mass for residue 2 in milligrams. Insert the ash mass for residue 1 in milligrams. When this data is entered, the content of IDF plus SDFP in the sample is automatically calculated and given as milligrams per 100 gram and as grams per 100 gram. The calculations of the SDFS fraction can also be performed as detailed in the data booklet or can be simplified using the Excel MegaCalc application as before. Insert the HPLC peak areas of the glycerol and glucose standard mixture to calculate the average response factor value for the SDFS analysis. Insert the mass of glycerol and glucose in one milliliter of the glycerol and glucose standard if they differ from the default value of 10 milligrams. Enter the mass in grams M1 or M2 associated with the matching SDFS sample. If a weight of glycerol other than the default value of 100 mg was added as the internal standard, alter this weight. Enter the peak area value obtained for the glycerol internal standard. Enter the peak area of the SDFS fraction. When this data is entered, the amount of SDFS is automatically calculated and given as milligrams per 100 gram and also as grams per 100 gram. Total dietary fibre is calculated as the sum of high molecular weight dietary fibre comprising of both IDF and SDFP plus the SDFS content. Method B. Measurement of TDF as IDF plus SDFP and SDFS. This method allows the determination of insoluble dietary fibre and soluble dietary fibre separately. This procedure is identical to the procedure used for the separation of IDF, SDFP and SDFS as described in AOAC method 2011.25. Samples are digested with pancreatic alpha amylase, amyloglucosidase and protease according to step F in the standard procedure. After the addition of the glycerol internal standard, the sample is filtered as described here. Wet and redistribute the bed of sea light in the pre-tiered crucible using approximately 15 milliliters of 78% volume per volume ethanol or IMS from a wash bottle. Apply suction to the crucible to draw the sea light onto the fritted glass as an even mat. Transfer the crucible from the waste butner to the sample butner. Using vacuum, Filter the enzyme digest through the crucible. Using a wash bottle with 60 degrees Celsius distilled water, rinse the incubation bottle with a minimum volume of water, approximately 10 milliliters, and use a rubber policeman spatula to dislodge all particles from the walls of the container. Transfer this suspension to the crucible. Wash the bottle with a further 10 milliliters of distilled water at 60 degrees Celsius and again transfer to the crucible. Transfer the crucible back to the waste butner and then transfer the combined filtrate and washings to a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Adjust the volume to 70 milliliters with distilled water and retain this for the determination of SDFP and SDFS. Using a vacuum, wash the residue successively with the two 15 milliliter portions of 78% volume per volume ethanol or IMS. 
then wash with two 15 milliliter portions of 95% ethanol. And then two 15 milliliter portions of acetone. And discard the washings. Continue the suction for a few minutes until acetone cannot be smelt in the crucible. To determine the IDF content, dry the sample crucibles containing the residue at 105 degrees Celsius overnight. Cool the crucibles in a desiccator for approximately one hour and weigh to the nearest 0.1 milligram. Calculate the residue mass by subtracting tear weight. Determine protein and ash weights in milligrams. Subtract protein and ash weights from the residue weight to give the value for the insoluble dietary fibre content. Preheat the filtrate of each sample approximately 70 milliliters to 60 degrees Celsius and add four volumes of 95% ethanol or IMS, preheated to 60 degrees Celsius. Cap the bottle and mix the contents thoroughly. Allow the precipitate to form at room temperature for 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, filter the suspension and recover the SDFP fraction on the sintered glass funnel as described for recovery of IDF and as summarised below. Retain the filtrate and washings for the determination of SDFS. Transfer one quarter of the filtrate, approximately 95 millilitres, to a 250 millilitre evaporator flask and evaporate to dryness under vacuum at 60 degrees Celsius. Redissolve this in 8 millilitres of deionized water. This is ready for desalting and HPLC as previously described in this video. Calculations are performed as described for IDF, SDFP, and SDFS in the kit booklet or alternatively using the appropriate Excel mega calc application. For further information the collaborative study for this method is discussed in detail in papers by McCleary et al.